Have you ever gone to your doctor and not actually been sure what you should be asking them about PCOS? In this video, I'm going to give you five things that you should be asking your doctor about your PCOS. I'm Taryn from PCOS Diet Support, and if you are new to the channel, welcome. It's lovely to have you here. If you want to know more about PCOS, then I really want to encourage you to subscribe, hit that bell so that you can get the notifications when new videos are released every week. Okay, let's get on to the topic at hand. When I was diagnosed with PCOS, um, I think I've shared this experience a number of times, but my appointment was the sum total of about 10 minutes. So I had my I had my pre-appointment where I had the blood test and I had my ultrasound. And when I went to see my doctor, there was very little that she told me, apart from, oh yes, you have PCOS and you can either go on the birth control pill or we can refer you to a fertility clinic. But that was really all. She didn't explain what PCOS was, what it meant for me, what I need to look out for. And so when, um, when you next go to your doctor, I want you to have the um, information that you need to ask the right questions. And sometimes we're just not sure what questions we need to ask. So if I had been a little bit more prepared, these are the questions that I would have asked my doctor. And in fact, they're the questions when I go and see my doctor about my PCOS, these are the questions that I still ask. The first question is, what support can you offer? When I was diagnosed with PCOS 10 years ago, there was really very little support. And I'm glad to say that things are changing. People are more aware of what PCOS is. There is better support out there than when I was first diagnosed. So that is the question. What support can your doctor offer you for PCOS? Maybe your doctor's thinking about a prescription or a medication that you might be taking, but perhaps there might be a referral to somebody, a referral to a nutritionist or a, or a dietitian, or there may be a referral to an endocrinologist or a reproductive endocrinologist. There is so much out there. So it's important to go to your doctor, bearing in mind what your current symptoms are and what your goals are with your PCOS. Maybe you want to lose weight, maybe you want to conceive, that will also determine where your doctor refers you to. But ask the question, what support is there for my PCOS? Perhaps there's even a support group in the area. Perhaps there's a charity that you can be referred to. So question number one, what support can you offer me for my PCOS? Question number two, is my thyroid healthy? Now, unfortunately, women with PCOS tend to... Um, also have issues with hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism and PCOS very often go hand in hand. And sometimes um, our thyroid issues can be missed because a lot of the symptoms can be very similar with hypothyroidism and PCOS. So your doctor may be putting it down to, hyper, um, down to PCOS when in actual fact, um, your thyroid hormone is also out of whack. And if your thyroid levels are out of whack, then it actually doesn't matter how much you do to treat your PCOS, your symptoms are likely to stay the same because the underlying problem is actually your thyroid. So I go for blood tests every two years and this is definitely a conversation to have with your doctor as to how often you need to be monitored for your PCOS. Um, I personally go every two years and when I do go, I always make sure that I have my thyroid hormone checked. Sorry about that, we nearly lost the mic. I always make sure that I have my thyroid hormone checked. It's really important. Okay. The next thing is we need to be monitoring our cholesterol. Women with PCOS tend to have higher levels of cholesterol and in actual fact, that's a really good video to do. So keep a lookout on this YouTube channel for a video on PCOS and cholesterol and why you need to be worried about your cholesterol. But women with PCOS tend to have um, higher cholesterol levels, high of the unhealthy cholesterol levels, which can have a serious implication on our longer term health. We are more prone to things like metabolic syndrome. We are more prone to cardiovascular disease. So keeping an eye on your cholesterol levels is really important. And as you change, as your um, metabolism changes, you know, we become more and more prone to some of these things the older we get. So it is important having it done once is not enough. You need to make sure that you are monitoring it on a regular basis, even if it is every year, every two years. Okay, the next thing that we need to be thinking about is am I insulin resistant? There is some really scary figures and research out there that show that I think the research was about 60% of women with PCOS will be pre-diabetic or have type 2 diabetes by the time they are 40. 
I've spoken so often in all the videos, I think probably just about every video on my YouTube channel, about how um, PCOS is so strongly linked with insulin resistance. It's really important to monitor your insulin resistance because the more resistant to insulin you are, not only um, are your PCOS symptoms going to be worse, so you are likely to put on more weight, you are likely to struggle with higher testosterone levels, it's just not an overall pretty picture. There are also a lot of longer term considerations when it comes to type 2 diabetes. Okay, there are a lot of things, um, you know, if, if you are an undiagnosed diabetic for a number of years, you can really struggle with the complications of diabetes. Things like you could lose your sight, you can, um, you know, you're more prone to cardiovascular issues around kind of blood flow. It's just really important. So this is not, again, it's not, a. I never really want to do these doom and gloom videos. It's not doom and gloom. These things absolutely can be prevented, but it's important to keep an eye on them. Which leads me to what about secondary health issues? Okay, we know that as we get older, there, we are more prone to these things. I've already mentioned a lot of them, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome. We are just prone to these things because of the very nature of our PCOS, the fact that we have PCOS. So it's important to go to your doctor and just say, what is it that I need to be aware of? And at what point do I need to come and see you? <laughs> okay, because we want to know what to look out for. We want to know when we may need to um, intervene medically. Okay, so those are the five things that I really recommend you ask your doctor the next time you go to see your doctor. And you may not even be going about your PCOS. You may be going about a common cold. It's always a great time. Go and have the bloods done and just check what all of those levels are because the, the um, information will give you power to make decisions about how to move forward in your PCOS management. It's really important that I really want to encourage you to be proactive. You are the leader of your PCOS team. Okay, you are the captain of the PCOS team. And so it's really important that you put these things in place for you, that you take responsibility for your health. Now, I've said this before, but this is not all doom and gloom. There is so much that you can do to manage your PCOS naturally. So even if you do have higher cholesterol levels than you like, even if you are slightly insulin resistant. There, was so, there are so many lifestyle changes and dietary changes that you could make that will really support your hormones and your health to prevent it from progressing into full-blown type 2 diabetes. So it's not all doom and gloom. And if you want more information on exactly what you can do, you are very welcome to go to PCOSDietSupport.com. There are over 100 articles on PCOS, on how to manage it, on the supplements to take, on food. So that's a great source of information. I will link below um, this video to my website, PCOS Diet Support, where you can find out so much more information.